ready to go. Ready whenever. <coughs> Hello and welcome back to Las Vegas here in the Canelo Charlo press room. We've just had the undercard press conference and we are of course joined by the one and only Jimmy Lennon Jr., the sound of boxing. How are you, Jimmy? I'm doing very well. You know, it's great to be here in the press room where it's brought back so many memories of so many great fights, the Mike Tyson fights, the Julio Cesar Chavez fights, and there's a buzz for this fight. Uh, like before. So I'm doing very well, really happy to be here um, with you and in this press room before the big fight. Right, it's great to have you here. Mm. I'm going to kind of probably throw a few kind of general questions your way. It's not often that we get to speak to you. Uh, we're very, very grateful to do so. Do you remember your first Vegas trip, Jimmy? Well, my first Vegas trip, uh, I don't remember my first, but some first memorable ones. Uh, Tyson Razor Ruddock many years ago here in Las Vegas. I believe that was at the Mirage. Uh, so those were some of my early memories, some of the early Tyson fights, some of the early Julio Cesar Chavez fights. I just mentioned them, but mm. those uh, really stick in my mind as some of the early ones. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's wonderful. And I'm I feel so honored to be part of these big fights again. And this is a big fight. We, we've had a lot of questions from from back home in the UK about the buzz here in Vegas this week. What's it like? How does it compare to the other big nights over the years? In your opinion, how, how is the buzz growing this week in this fight for two undisputed, between two undisputed champions and a historic fight? Is there a buzz that's comparable to some of those bigger, bigger fights and nights that you talked about? Absolutely. Uh, there is a, a palatable feel here that we have a big fight. Uh, and this is still just Thursday and it's going to get bigger tomorrow and, of course, Saturday. But no, I definitely have the feel of that. Uh, the ring is set up at the entrance at the MGM Grand. You got people taking pictures and and uh, you know, cheering and yelling. The the lobby is full. The press room is exciting. So it has a, a big uh, feel to a big fight. Mm. I would say, to be honest, yeah, the Mike Tyson fights I think were a little bit bigger. When you have the heavyweight championship of the world, yeah. uh, those were uh, I think unsurpassed kind of fights. But this is a big fight, a must see fight, and you feel it. Mm. How, how did it compare to the Floyd Mayweather night? So you did, you did many of those. Obviously, Canelo is the sort of next generational star after Floyd. How does he compare in those stakes, do you think? Yeah, I think, I think that's a very good comparison because uh, while Floyd was the face of boxing, I think Canelo is the face of boxing yeah. now. Um, I think there's a little difference in that you have a large Mexican crowd coming here from, from Mexico. Uh, who uh, very boisterous, very enthusiastic, very proud. And so you, you get a, a, a nice sense of that here as well. But uh, I would say it's comparable. Mm. I would say it's comparable. Just on Canelo, Jimmy, I mean, there seems to be this kind of notion that, that Canelo maybe has seen better days. I mean, at 33 years of age, he's it's kind of an old 33 in boxing terms, of course, made his debut all of those years ago. He's a 15-year-old in Mexico and has had you know, a host of, of top level fights against elite world champions. Do you subscribe to that? Do you think maybe we've seen the, the potentially the best of Canelo Alvarez? I think uh, that's something I'm interested to see on Saturday night. Uh, certainly he's had a lot of fights. He's had a lot of tough fights. Um, and we shall see. He looked a little slower in his last fight, last two fights perhaps. Will Jermel Charlo use that to his advantage being a smaller man maybe he'd be naturally quicker i think we'll see about that um i think there's also a challenge when fighters go up and down in weight and so going up to 175 as canelo did and back down and so forth we'll see if that ha takes a toll but i think this fight will reveal some of the answers to those questions just uh give everybody uh, the usual kind of nudge get your questions in we've got jimmy lennon jr on the on the live chat today so make sure we're getting those questions in for him we've got a, a question here i'm not sure so i'm not sure when it comes to uh when it comes to picking favorites and things not necessarily for this fight where you stand so we're going to find out and it says favorite current current heavyweight jimmy oh you know um i've been a fan of tyson fury for a while now um i, I uh, find him entertaining outside of the ring and inside of the ring as well. Uh, I, I see him be behind the scenes and I like him as a person very much. And so I, uh, that, that's, I would rank him up there as, as my favorite heavyweights. Uh, enjoy the opportunity to go to England and announce a number of his fights and the way the fans respond to him builds it inside of me as well. So I would mark him up there, but I love the heavyweight division. I think we have uh, you know, a lot of good 
a lot of good fights still in in um, in play for us. Did you mention uh, earlier on about Mike Tyson? Do you think that it was Mike Tyson the best one to cover? Was he the, the, the one that really got your juices going? Absolutely, no question. Um, he was the one in the crowd when the fight would take place. From round number one, people would be on their feet the whole time and not sit down the whole fight quite often. When he would throw a punch and miss, the crowd would go wild and you could feel the roar of the crowd just to see the speed and fury in, in his punches. And um, so... There was nothing like a Mike Tyson fight, I would say, in, in all my career. Uh, so that that would be the pinnacle of excitement of the crowd. So he stands out. Um, for yourself, Jimmy, obviously you've been doing this for, for a while now. You're, you're from boxing stock as well, of course. Um, does it still kind of get you get your juices going? How do you feel about Vegas? I mean, we come to Vegas probably, you know, what, maybe once every six months, probably mm. on average. And, you know, we still get those, those butterflies and those funny feelings coming to Sin City. What about yourself? I mean, you've been here, I don't know how many times over the years. Does, does Vegas still do it for you? Well, yes, it does. What doesn't do it for me is gambling and so forth. That doesn't do it for me. I'm always here for work. But when I'm here, it's a big fight. And mm. so I get very excited about the big fights. That is not old to me. I am excited, and I will, I will treat this fight and every fight like it's the most important and the last fight I'll ever do. And so I do get excited about that. I love the sport of boxing. I love the atmosphere. I love the people that I get a chance to meet. And so I get excited for those reasons. We, we were talking about the, the idea of a kind of Las Vegas slipstream. When we land here, you saw it quite handily and easily get back into the routine of it. Do you have a Las Vegas routine when you land? Do you stay in the same place? Do you do the same things? Eat the same food? Have you got it set out now after all the years? I have some of those routines down, but, you know, the reality is, you know, I work for Showtime Television in the United States, and they decide where I stay and so forth. Um, but certain flights I like to come. I'm not a, uh, a superstitious man, mm. so I, I don't have any kind of routines of that. But I do rest. I rest my voice. Um, I, I try to take care of myself. Uh, as best I can during here. So that's the most of my routine. I used to go to the spa and you know, steam up my voice and so forth. I don't do that as much now, but taking care of myself is, is the key so that I can be on yeah. for fight night. It's not exactly the uh, the capital of wellness, is it? <laughs> yeah. that, and then being indoors and aircon and stuff like that. It can't be great for the vocal cords. No, in fact, the, the, dry, hum the dry atmosphere here and then the air conditioning tends to dry up my mm. voice. I've lost my voice before a fight and croaked my way through it and it's so embarrassed but no i'll sometimes get a humidifier sent in but no it's not good for it it <laughs> wreaks havoc on my voice so got a question here for raymond spencer this is going to be a difficult one for you to answer okay. i'm sure which fight was the most memorable that you've covered <laughs> no i have i have you know there have been a number uh the, the ear bite with tyson was certainly something that uh, i'll never forget um but the fight that really stands out to me is Julio Cesar Chavez versus Greg Haugen. And this was in Mexico yeah. City with 135,000 people in attendance. And the atmosphere is something I, I can never forget. And I remember, you know, th th there's a moat, but there's a soccer stadium, and there's a moat between the crowd the, the, and the kind of VIP, maybe, I don't know, 10,000 people on the soccer field, soccer field. And in that moat were German shepherds. And there, and there were guards with guns. Like they, I don't know what kind of guns they were, but they were, there was no, you know, they're controlling the masses. And I remember before the main event came on, there was a laser light show and, and beautiful music playing. I was surprised, uh, you know, how lovely it really was. And I was with Don King in the ring, and I tell this story, and it's true, he, he kind of had like misty eyes. Here's a man who's seen everything in his career, done everything in his career, the greatest promoter perhaps of all time, and he was so moved by the scene of the people. And it made me realize, I realized later that he was actually counting the people on the proceeds and how much money <laughs> they make. <laughs> so perhaps that was the reason why. But that was a most memorable event. The fight was not the most memorable. The event was absolutely stands out in my mind. Even after all of these years and the amount of occasions that you've been at and all of the big fights that you've called, you still get that? You still get the hairs on the back of your neck? You still get the goosebumps? I do. I do. Uh, on a big fight, I'm just so excited ab about, um, you know, my role. The atmosphere of the crowd helps build it up as well. The bigger fight, the bigger the fight, uh, the easier it is for me in some ways. And, it, and it's more of a charge for me and the excitement there. And really my favorite part is finishing it all, stepping down out of the ring, sitting down and watching it unfold. I mean, that's, 
that's the best part. I get so excited waiting for that first bell. Do you still get nerves? You know, my I sure get get nerves, but I I tend to turn my nerves into focus. Mm. And uh, how do you do that? I, I don't know. I, I always do. I just I I th that's just something I always do. Maybe it's natural, and I, I don't know what. But um, I turn it into focus, and um, and I think that helps me. Mm. And I just want to do a good job. Every single fight, I feel like this is the last, not the last, but my whole career will be judged on what I do. And that's what I feel on Saturday night. So I'll prepare hard and I'll hyper focus. And I feel like all the fights I've done don't really matter. I want to do the best job possible for this fight on Saturday night. Mm. And what, is, what does preparation look like for you? How, are you? Do you lock yourself in a room and go through it? How does it look for you in fight week? Um, yeah, no, I, uh, so I write a Showtime re requests me to write a script. So I'll write a script and I'll, I'll run it through, send it to them. They rehearse and have someone else read what I'm going to say. And then I'll go over my notes. And if there is something difficult, if it's a, a difficult name or a foreign language, I'll just run it through my mind. I will be in a quiet place um, the day, the entire day of the fight and just kind of focus on that um, as, as best I can. It's nothing special. It's just paying attention and not having distractions. Any, any particular name that you can remember being particularly tricky? <laughs> well, you know, uh, first of all, you know, names in Spanish, I love. It just lends itself to, to flow. So I, I enjoy that and I speak Spanish uh, a little bit. So that helps. French is difficult. So all the French names, uh, some of the Thai names are difficult. I've been to Thailand and now since, and they're so long, but sometimes not as, as hard. But I remember doing a Thai fighter and, you know, it was long. Koban Luk Chao Tay Simon was his name. And, and so getting that right was, was a challenge, but I'll work on it. And, you know, I really work hard to, um, before I come to wherever I'm going for the fights, I have a number of people I call to find out how to properly pronounce your name. I got a Filipino connection. I got, you know, I even recently had an Armenian fighter. I wasn't sure. So I went to an Armenian deli in my neighborhood and I found out how they pronounce their names. And uh, it makes me look smart, but I, <laughs> I rely on other people. How do you how do you feel about the Timo Ballerino? It's kind of uh, established now on the strip. But I remember when it first popped up and obviously people are used to the garden downstairs and, and it's a new arena and it, always it's difficult when somewhere's new to sort of get your teeth into but it's well established how do you feel how's the atmosphere there compared i think it's very good it's it's you know obviously the place to be for a big fight mm. now it's the largest arena that we can go to that's you know pretty much on the strip and uh yeah we have a little history and that history helps you know when you when you have uh the big fights there and all the big fights there it helps it's great the sound is great uh the the seats are great you know, it, it's Las Vegas. Everything is done well. Everything is done big. And everything is done quality. And I feel that with T-Mobile Arena. Mm. What's your favorite venue? You know, I love going to Japan. I love doing fights in Japan. I, I uh, enjoy the atmosphere. Although it's, it's hard because it's a quiet crowd. Um, and they don't cheer. So you feel like something's wrong. But I, I think I love that trip. But Wembley Stadium was amazing. With, again, Tyson Fury. Um, you know, I don't know if you can beat the British crowds. I, I just don't think that's correct it's answer. The, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the most <laughs> fun. audience, Jimmy Lennon, <laughs> That's why he's been so successful <laughs> for such a period of time. Yeah, you should have heard him over there on Armenian radio. Yes, in Trinidad also. <laughs> it was, you know. Uh, no, it is true. It's, it's hard to beat the excitement, the thrill, the songs, the singing. The, you know, it's just unbelievable. Crazy fans in, in, in winter outdoors, you know, coming to see a fight. Uh, that's very special. Interesting question here. Uh, what's your relationship like with Michael Buffer? You're, you're the two kind of <laughs> iconic sounds and iconic names in, in your respective fields in the sport. You've had nights where you've kind of shared proceedings. What's your relationship like with Michael? Oh, we're enemies. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Who would win in a fight? <laughs> we're, we are colleagues. We get along fine. We, we have different paths and different roads that we take. Um, his wife, uh, we, 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 his wife, uh, and my wife shares some things in common, and so periodically a nice greeting from him, and and so we're colleagues, and I always wish him the best. It's strange that, isn't it? Because he's like the only other person on earth who kind of understands what you do to that extent. It's, you're the two iconic guys, really. You have so much in common. 
but you're so separate just by the nature of the business. The nature of the business, we're not together very often. We had, as you mentioned, uh, opportunity to share the microphone on a few big fights. Yeah. Um, Tyson Lennox Lewis, um, again, um, Chiquita Gonzalez and Michael Carbajal before that as well. And, and then, of course, uh, Mayweather Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Mayweather Pacquiao. Uh, so we've had that opportunities, but other, otherwise we don't see each other very often. On those nights where you're both in the same venue, do you think I really need to do a job tonight? I'm, I'm really going to turn it up here. <laughs> I'm going to show buffer. Yeah. <laughs> show buffer what it's all about. Yeah. That's a yes. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> it's fine. Isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, I try to. I do my best, I, and and I certainly um, big events and, and, and big moments like that. I wanted to show that I want to do my best. Yeah, of course, mm, of course. Of course. I mean, it's of course. just like anybody else. Like for us, it's media. You know, that's a huge event for the fighters. Of course, it's kind of a career-defining event. It must be something similar for yourself as well. You want to kind of not, not put your stamp on it. Obviously, it's the fighters and the fight, but still have that for yourself. Absolutely, I do. But I do want to make something clear. My job is is to put the spotlight on the fighters, of course, yeah, yeah. not on me. Mm. And that's the, I, I will always adhere to that. They're the ones that everyone's paying to see. They're the mm. ones that um, are risking their lives and they're the ones that deserve it. And so th that's what it's about. And it should never be confused otherwise. It really shouldn't. Well said. Um, in kind of recent years, well, I'm not an MMA fan at all, but we've seen kind of the advent of, of Bruce Buffer, uh, another Buffer. Um, and, and kind of his style, is, I feel like, has been imitated really uh, across combat sports we're starting to see a little bit more of the the shouting and the, the do, you, do you notice that do you notice kind of people like trends appearing in your respective fields yeah i see people imitating michael bruce and myself and i and i see the influence th that is there and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um so yeah i i do see i do see the influence of of ring announcers th that get some attention and I, it makes sense. Some people see that as a path. Some young ring announcers will see that as a path to success. And we'll see. You know. Okay. Well, I think we're, that's probably a, yeah. about about there it's now. Those vocal cords to look after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when, when do you shut up shop voice. for the for the week? Do you do you, you do a bit? You do turns the, into a mute after the week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't talk to anyone. What are we on now? Thursday now. How, how, how much more speech have you got in you before yeah, you before yeah, we'll, you close we'll have, the doors? We'll have the uh, weigh in tomorrow. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of chatting and, yeah, and yeah. so forth away, and especially when it's loud. And um, I'll try to not go to bed too late. And uh, I'll be careful with, you know, the wine that I drink. I, I, I really did learn, you know, I, I'm not a big drinker, but that's not good for me to do too much before a fight. Saturday is when I'll really be quiet. And in the arena, I'll be quiet because there's sound in the arena and there's a lot going on. And sometimes I feel like I'm rude because I'm not talking to people so much. But, you know, I kind of clamp down a little at yeah. that point okay well with that being said we won't ask you to waste any more of your voice on us thank you so <laughs> much jimmy lennon jr absolute legend of the sport hall thank of you, famer jimmy. thanks so much for stopping my pleasure by. to be with you thank and you we look forward to catching up with you soon thank you nice thank you jimmy. I'll take that from you give me that uh, mic thank you there we go thanks very much jimmy thank you so much take care jimmy, jimmy lennon jr jimmy lennon jr guys. what a legend yeah.